Nobody business if I walk, talk, make love, sing, but I'm able to love. My topic is the three requirements and limits. The first requirement of the limits is the limit exists at x equals c. And c is a constant. As you can see right here, a constant is the element of the domain. The second requirement is that fc is defined. That the third requirement is that a limit of fx is equal to fc as x is approaching c, and both c's are a constant. Okay. Um, right here I have two examples that will help you better, better understand these three requirements. The first example is this one right here, the one in the red. The limit of fx as x is approaching positive one, I mean, as x is approaching one from the positive side, which means it is coming from the right. That way. As you can see right here, the limit would be 1, which is the limit itself. And the other limit is the limit of fx as x is approaching 1 from the negative side, which is just the opposite of this limit, which would mean it would come from the left side. Then, if both of, these, if both of the limits are equal, you can have a general limit, which is found right here. The limit of fx is equal to 1 as x is approaching 1. Our second example is this one. Now, these are more trickier because they have discontinuity and are not continuous, and Johnny will be going over that with you later on, and Christina will just go into more depth about these two examples. As you can see, right here, the limit of fx as x is approaching 2 from the positive side. But well, which one is it? Is it the top one or the bottom one? Well, you can picture it as a little man running this way. As you can see, his limit is right here. He can't go and he can't jump all the way up here. So then the limit would be negative 1, as you can see right here. Okay, the second one is the same, it's just the opposite. The limit of fx as x is approaching 2 from the positive, from the negative side. You can just use the same thing, the little man running this way. And the limit is up here. The limit would be positive 2, as you can see right here. Now, since both of these limits are, under, are not equal, we would have an undefined limit. An undefined limit. And that is it for the three requirements of limits. All right. The common mistakes for the three requirements of limits would be that you would confuse the limit of X, well, x is approaching 2 from the positive side with the limit of x approaching 2 from the negative side. Some people might think that the limit of x, um, while x is approaching 2 from the positive side, would be the top one right here, but it's not. That is the limit for x approaching 2 from the negative side. And the way you can think of that is just with the little man running. He's not, he's not able to run from the negative side to the positive side, you can see right here. The correct way would be the limit of fx, while x is approaching two from the positive side would be negative one. And the limit for fx, while x is approaching two from the negative side would be, would be two. And that is the common mistake while finding limits. Okay, now that Edgar has, has described what 
an actual limit is. I'm going to teach you what, how, three ways to evaluate limits. There's three ways. Two, <laughs> and for numerically, A for algebraically, and D for, um, I can't spell, graphing. However, actually, it's going to come right after, because explain algebraically. So, numerically, we have an equation such as y equals x plus 5. If you want to solve it numerically, you just, like, you're looking for, for the limit as x is approaching 2. So, numerically, instead of actually putting the, the, num the limit to the actual number, you choose, very, you choose numbers that are kind of close to that number, but not really. So in this case, we're going to choose 1.9, 1.99, and 1.999. When you put them into the calculator, you get, you get 6.9, 6.99 and 6.999. So as you can see, if you keep on putting numbers close to two, you get seven. So if you do it from the other side, from the left side, you choose numbers that are two, but not close to two. So in this case, we choose 2.1, 2.01, and 2.001. And if you put that in the calculator, you get 7.1, 7 .01, 7 .001. So from the left side, you can see that we also get 7. So if you input 2, the limit as the equation equals 7. So now, we got that out of the way. Now it's graphing. Okay, so now that we have numerically down, we're gonna do it graphically. So if you look at the at the equation y equals x plus five, it's just a linear graph. So it's just a straight line. Since the y intercept is a five, if you're trying to find the limit as x approaches two, from the left, from the right side, do it right. Limit x. Y, I guess. As x approaches 2, from the right side, it's coming in. If you were to graph it, it would be coming in at 7. So that's from the right side. From the left side, you can do the same thing. As x approaches 2, from the left side, indicated by the negative sign, you would get 7. And according to Edgar, who said before, if both of these exist and if both of these are equal, then the limit has to exist. So the general limit as x approaches 2 is 7. Some of the common mistakes that people find is that when a function is undefined at a certain point, but it is defined a bit higher, even though these two don't really, actually don't really hit the point, they're intending to reach the point. So the limit exists right here, not right here. And that's about it. You were. Okay, my topic is the major methods. And there's three, substitution, factory, and the conjugate method. The first method we're gonna go over is substitution. All you have to do is plug in numbers. For example, the limit of x approaching 4. So we have x squared minus x plus 2. Then we move over here, and it becomes 4 squared minus 4 plus 2, which is 16 minus 4 plus 2, which is 12 plus 2 equals 14. And then this is your final answer. Limit x approaches 4, x squared minus x plus 2 equals 14. Then we have factoring, and all you have to 